That's better. Now the camera on back to front. Plonk. Oh, do you know, just the business of living is just relentless, isn't it? Just, you know, just carrying on. No wonder it's uh, difficult to develop new products and services. Just take my grass. Actually, I wish you would take my grass. <laughs> no. I had, I have a small tractor. It's like an orchard tractor, it's a tiny thing. It's bigger than a ride-on, but it's a lot less than the normal tractor you see, because it's designed to fit in between rows of fruit trees. It's, a, it's like a little narrow thing. Anyway, it's got this big rotating blade on the back, five foot rotating blade called a topper. And those of you who sort of um, been listening to these blogs, blogs, whatever they're called, will know that I had a lot of trouble with it. I had, uh, first of all, the clutch packed up, then the tyres kept going flat because they're running over Hawthorne, so I put Kevlar wheels on it, then I got water in the fuel line, then etc, etc. So, then, then, funnily enough, I fell down the stairs and uh, broke my coccyx, coccyx, whatever it's called. Anyway, I broke it, and uh, so I couldn't sit, so I couldn't sit in the tractor, bounce up and down in the tractor, and that that went on for over a year. Then, whenever I wanted to use it, the battery was flat and I needed a new battery anyway. Then, then uh, my, uh, then you, of course you run out of diesel because I'm using was using red diesel, and you have to order that in separately. And then they keep complaining about the tank not being double bunded because it's. Historically, it isn't, but the new ones have to be. But they always complain that this one isn't. So, anyway, the point was that it got to the point where my grass never got mowed. And this year, for the first year, I finally managed to sort out every single problem with the with the tractor. So I've drained the water out of the fuel. I've uh, Replaced the the uh, oil filter. I've I'm ordering. I'm just using ordinary diesel. I cannot be bothered to order in red diesel at the rate of 20 liters every other week. I mean, basically, they only want to sell you 2,000 liters at a time, and it, it's a risk of getting stolen. And so, I'd rather just. And that's the clonking you can hear in the back. Is the diesel? Uh, it costs about 20 quid to fill up the can of diesel, and it lasts me like. A month so I'm like the alternative is commissioning somebody to build me a diesel tank that's double bunded and that can take you know like a ton of fuel um, and uh, it's just not cost effective it's far more cost effective just to buy a few liters when I need it and pay the the uh, the full tax you know not try and get the red diesel Anyway, um, anyway, where am I going with this? So, so uh, yeah, so you know, I've tried to sort of mow the lawn again, and um, and the best way to do it, I find, is to just mow a small part, and then make sure that you can keep mowing that, keep that under control, and then when you feel like you know you've got a bit of spare time, then mow a bit more, and then then you've got a bit more to mow. So eventually, when you know, and extend your influence, extend slowly don't just mow the whole lot and then realize that you can't you don't have enough time to mow the whole lot again so part of the garden's starting to look nice it's like the roads isn't it they everyone they're like oh let's build a new road let's build a new road and they can't maintain the ones they've got but no um, just uh, the computer at work, the, uh, I don't know, I, honestly I don't know how people cope with computer systems. I know, I've seen two computer systems, there we go, tissue, 
They're colder mine, still not completely gone. I've seen two computer systems in dental practices and both of them were laughable. I mean, really. One was a, a standalone computer in reception that nobody was allowed to touch apart from the practice manageress. And that, that practice, that was um, Chopra's practice in Sittingbourne was in the Stone Age and uh, a single telephone in reception as well that only the practice manager was allowed to touch. Unbelievable. And uh, what was the, oh yeah, and the other one, well the other one really was the computer system that I took over when I bought the practice. And that was sort of maintained by a firm that was charging £200 a month, I think, or £250 a month or something for computer support. And all they did was back up the system. I think one computer on the system and the reception computer, which was a, a touch screen, uh, one where, the, you know, where, where all the guts of the computer is in the back of the screen, like an HP. So, you know, pretty consumer grade really low consumer grade uh, system working the work in the notes was acting as the server for all the data and um, they backed up that reception the reception computer for 250 pounds a month and they had three antiviruses on it I think one which they'd put on and uh, you know the, the is it BCS I think the computer company one which BTS had put on and two which the owner had put on uh, and uh, two systems for dialing in remotely team viewer and uh, uh, there was another one around at the time that's since gone into the private sector and got work that could be installed free so you know and absolutely riddled with uh, bugs and crapware you know And so the first thing we had to do was literally reformat all the computers, just to try and find out where the data was, find out how the data worked with no, you know, using as usual all um, software that was sort of new in 2009 or 2005 with no manuals. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and then so once we were sure that we'd sort of safeguarded the data then it was a case of uh, reformat everything, reinstall and try and get the system working again. And it was complicated because uh, some of the software is 32-bit uh, because it's only got 32-bit drivers like the x-ray machines and therefore it would run, only run on a 32-bit install whether it was Windows 10 or 7 and some of the rest of it was um, uh, wasn't compatible with Windows 10 so it would only run on Windows 7 but it didn't matter whether it was 32-bit or 64-bit as long as it was Windows 7 so we had to work all this out you know and try and work out why why everything wasn't working and we got there in the end but actually there's a digital dentistry show coming up soon I think I'm gonna definitely go along to that because I need to um, certainly look at a new digital x-ray system I feel sorry for the you know anybody who's not sort of really good on computers these days. I find computers to be such an integral part of running a dental practice. You know, not least because you're running your computer, uh, your your notes, you know, your patient notes on it. Um, but um, you're working out associate salaries on it. Your all of our patients correspond by email now. Not none of them really uh, even ring up much unless they're trying to you know change something that where it's usually quicker to ring than it is to email or they want to ask a question so if you really don't know your computers I think you're, you're really in trouble our server for example kept crashing last week it's a business grade uh, PC it's a Dell Optiplex 5150 which we got because uh, someone was throwing them out. Why, why would a company throw out computers? I know. 
it's because nobody wants desktops anymore. They're moving to laptops. Laptops now are more than powerful enough to do most business computing, you know, run spreadsheets, do email and stuff like that. Easily do that on a laptop. And if you give your employees laptops, then they can take them home and carry on working at home. And nobody wants a, to be tied to a massive great desk unit that's uh, only in one place, you know. So they're getting rid of these things and instead of replacing them with other PCs they're replacing with laptops but they obviously they've got sort of business grade graphics card in in this case it was a uh, Nvidia 295 I think which is a real like you know 256 megs of memory or 512 megs of memory is very very minimal uh, display Just try and get the focus on this a bit better. That's it. It's very, very sunny today. It's a lovely day in paradise. And good morning to you. Uh, if you don't like computers, then you're not going to be interested in today. I shall put a flag up saying, if you're not involved, if you're not a systems engineer, let's face it, every dentist has to be a systems engineer, then don't worry. So um, yeah, so the the server started uh, flashing. You know, all the screens are flashing, and this is a sign of um, a graphics card crashing. And uh, if you've overclocked here, I don't know if you've ever tried to overclock a graphics card, but the good thing about overclocking, speeding them up, is that if you speed them up too much, they just go, they throw a wobbly fit and so you then have to underclock them and then they're okay again. It's not like they're, you'd have to really do something heinous to a graphics card to permanently damage it. But, uh, yeah, so so this is flashing. So, but I wasn't overclocking this. I'm thinking, well, that's odd. And then, of course, your initial reaction is, well, it didn't, you know, why was it, why is it doing it this week? It didn't do this last week. Last week, everything was fine. And I processed these videos on the server uh, you know, which is a, it's a reasonably pokey computer. Helicopter just uh, taken off, flying over the top of us. I've got my sights on the helicopter. The one I want is four and a half million dollars though. Bell 407, very nice, but uh, very expensive. I don't know what that is. That might be a 407 actually. Yeah, lovely. So, um, anyway. That's why the videos have been a bit late. Because every time I try and compile a video, transcode a video for YouTube, on the, the graphics card would start glitching and then that would crash the server and staff are getting fed up with having to reboot all the computers. So, um, anyway, I've upgraded it, but this combines two of my... My favourite themes, which are dentists have to work bloody seven days a week, 24 hours a day, because I had to spend Saturday with a friend of mine, because I bought a second-hand graphics card off of him, but quite a decent one. So I took it over to his place, and we, between the two of us, we fitted the graphics card. And then, of course, you have to upgrade the power supply, because the power supply won't... Uh, <laughs> Won't, won't take the new graphics card and then so that all done and then on Sunday I then have to go down to um, the practice and, and put it all back in you know so that it's ready for whenever they turn the lights you know when they turn the server on this morning and because it's a new graphics card it needs two different leads to the monitors because they uh, the outputs on the old graphics card were sort of an old type and then this needs new HDMI cables so I have to sort those out and then we advertise on uh, Academy, Academy FM which is our local sort of student radio station just locally Thanet East Kent area and um, we've moved our advertising to the weekends and so they said well we want you to come in on a weekend and have a chat with one of the weekend DJs you know to introduce yourself 
to the weekend audience. So of course Sunday 10 o'clock I've had to drive all the way back into work, plumb in the server and do a radio interview. So, you know, when people say, oh yeah, you dentist, you're always down the golf course, uh, it makes me laugh. Well, it makes me laugh because I don't play golf. I decided not to play golf. I, uh, when I went into general practice in 1982, so many of the patients said, um, yeah, I suppose you're, every Friday afternoon you're on the golf course. I realized that it was a real sort of the golf playing dentist was a real hackney stereotype <laughs> so I just decided that I wasn't going to do it you know I mean it was tempting people say oh yeah you know you lifelong friendships are made on the golf course you'll do a lot of business on the golf course um, I don't know I've never I don't know how you're going to meet if I was going to recruit patients if I wanted patients who played golf, I suppose I'd recruit them on a golf course, but I've never really, you know, all of our new patients come from personal recommendation and Google. They're the two, they're the only two marketing channels that are worth a damn. So I don't know why, uh, you know, except probably in the old days, I don't know, perhaps all the high net worth individuals were, could be found on the golf course. But, but you'd have to play a lot of golf, wouldn't you, to and the opportunity cost of all those afternoons. I suppose, you know, it's fun playing golf. In fact, right on cue, there's a golf course on my left hand side and people playing golf. Seven minutes past nine in the morning. Right. So, um, so sorry, apologies about the delay. Computer problems, take no notice. Uh, everything should be back to normal as soon as possible so I'm nearly at work I'm gonna go and get my hair cut this morning because I don't start till 11 o'clock so I'm just gonna plug in my GPS to uh, try and find out where the hair where the barbers is uh, I'll talk to you next time bye